students. Um, I am Mrs. Short. I'm your world history teacher. If I had you first semester, this is probably going to be a lot of review. But if you have yet to have me for world history, I just want to take you through how this system is going to work. And hopefully it'll help you to um, learn a lot, but also to know when you're confused and if you need help and you need to ask a question. So let's get started. All right, so you guys, um, one of the most important things you should do is look at the syllabus. It will be posted on Google Classroom for you, but obviously you need to see the syllabus to be able to get into Google Classroom. So let me take you through the basics of the syllabus and I'll show you what Google Classroom looks like and um, some of the ways that I set up the work on there so that you can easily navigate it. So first of all, this is world history. It's semester two. So if you can look down here, these are the things we're gonna be covering in semester two. So we're gonna start out with World War I. So hopefully wherever you were for semester one, you got through um, imperialism and you're on to World War I. Um, every day in Home Choice, we're on a semester system here. So it's like you were in class um, each day, five days a week for about 55 minutes. So expect that you're gonna spend that amount of time 55 minutes a day, Monday through Friday. And then if you get finished early, you're amazing. And then you can move on to something else. Um, there is one requirement other than working on your classwork and getting it done, which is that you attend an office hour with me. Normally we would be doing it in person, but now that we have are still under restrictions with COVID and we want to keep everyone safe, I'm going to be doing those office hours on Thursdays between 2.30 and 3.30 on Zoom. And in this syllabus, there's a place for you to click and sign up for a time to attend. Um, obviously, usually I just meet with the students for these Zoom meetings, but parents are more than welcome to attend if they have questions, or I may email a parent and ask or a guardian and ask them to attend if for some reason work is not being completed and that kind of thing. So uh, all of the coursework and everything is going to be housed on Google Classroom as well as your grades. So at one point in the semester when uh, progress reports are due and then when uh, final grades are due, I will go ahead and transfer that cl Google Classroom grade to Infinite Campus. But if you're looking for assignments and grades, they're on Google Classroom. Um, so all work is going to be, it will be pushed out to you through Google Classroom on Monday at 8 a.m. And then it's due Friday by 11.59 p.m. So just be aware of that. Um, you can get graded down if you don't turn in your work on time. So grades are going to be updated on Google Classroom. Usually I'm about a week behind because you guys turn in your work and then I go the next week and I grade it and update it. So just be aware. There's a little bit of lag while I grade your work. And your work will be turned into two locations, possibly. The first location would be Google Classroom. The second location would be turnitin.com. Sometimes I am concerned about plagiarism. I want to make sure work is your own and in your own words. And so I'll have you submit an assignment to turnitin.com as well. Um, all of the information for how to do that is on this page. Hopefully you've used that um, program in one of your other classes. And so it won't be that unfamiliar to you. So turning in work, you're going to see what it looks like on Google Classroom in just a second. And again, I'm going to change this right now. This is not 3.30. It's due by 11.59 p.m. All right. So the following site. So the first thing is if you just click on this link, it'll automatically add you to my Google Classroom. But if you want to go old, old school and you want to type in the code, here's the code to get in. Um, turnitin.com, you'll click on this link and this is the class ID and this is the enrollment key in order to turn things into turnitin.com. It's a separate logon and you have to be able to join the class. So this is turnitin.com. This is for Google Classroom. You need to do both of those things. Additionally, even if I had you last quarter, semester, whatever we're on, um, I need you to sign up for office hours again. So you're gonna go to this Google form right here and it's going to pop open and it's gonna look something like this. Sorry, it'll ask for your email address. It'll ask for your Sorry, it'll ask for your email address. It'll ask for the time that you want to have your meeting. Um, so just be aware that that's there. Next, I hope you were able to see that. Sometimes when I'm doing these things, it doesn't change tabs. 
So the next thing I want to do is I want to show you Google Classroom. So let's see if this is working. All right, you guys, here is the Google Classroom homepage. And this is where at the top you'll see stream, classwork, and grades. I do not believe you'll have people. That's a teacher item. And then the stream, while sometimes it'll give you updates, it's not the most usable place for useful place for you to go. You want to spend your time with classwork and grades. So grades, you make sure that you're getting the points for the assignments you turned in. And then classwork is where you're going to go and get your weekly assignments. So if I were to click on this right now, you're going to see on the left hand side will be your topics. So every week you should have a topic. So eventually there will be 18 weeks over here. Right now there are just two. So if you were to click on week one, you're going to see two different um, types or maybe three different types of assignments. So what you're going to see is you're going to see a work schedule. This work schedule kind of just gives you the overview for the week of the assignments that you're going to need to complete. And so what I would do with this is I might click on this. If you have a printer or you like to do things where you like to mark things off, I would print this off so that you can check off that you do the work when it when it's due. So it looks a little bit yeah, it's not going to pop up, but you can kind of see it. it's like a table here. Then you have a clipboard and a clipboard, that little icon is going to tell you that you have work to complete. And this is where you will do the work and turn in much of the work, not necessarily all the work, because remember, we do use turnitin.com as well. So you need to be really cognizant of where things need to be turned in. On this little um, overview of work schedule, it does tell you on the left-hand column where you're to submit the different assignments. So sometimes you just turn it right into Google Classroom, so no big deal. When you push submit, it'll go where it needs to go. But sometimes you actually need to also submit it to turnitin.com. So you need to be aware of that. So when I go to turnitin.com, that's where I'm expecting to grade it. So if it's not there, that would be a problem. So again, I put that week two work, uh, week or sorry, semester two, week one work, I put it right here as well. So you have it in two places. But now you have all of your additional um, work attached that you're going to be doing. So you'll notice that, let's see if I can move this over. Yeah. You'll notice that you have your reading assignment, which is Prelude to War. Um, here you have your Google Notes template. You have um, your DBQ documents that you're going to be reading and analyzing, and then you have an outline. You're going to be writing a paragraph, so you have an outline that you're going to be completing. So when you do all of that, then you would submit them to the appropriate places, and then you'd be done for your work for the week. Also, there's one other additional thing that I want to point out is I a lot of times assign lectures that I myself make, or sometimes... I assign like a crash course about world history. And so in order to have you watch that, I use something called Edpuzzle. So you may see under week one work. So again, we go back to kind of week one work over here. You may see an Edpuzzle as well listed. So you'll have um, a little assignment uh, overview here. You'll have week one work here and then right underneath you'll have an additional assignment where you have to click on the link for the video and watch it. And a lot of times questions will be embedded. And if you don't watch it to the very, very end, you won't get credit. So you have to make sure that you watch it to the very, very end, that you answer all the questions, and then it'll grade you and it'll automatically update. If for some reason there were questions that needed a teacher to grade, so it's not multiple choice, then you'll get a preliminary grade for just the multiple choice questions that were there, but the other questions will look like you're getting a zero until I go and grade them. So don't be concerned, once I grade them, they will be changed. If for some reason you don't see them changing, either you got them wrong or I made a mistake. So feel free to reach out to me and communicate with me and I will double check and make sure that I have graded your Edpuzzle um, videos correctly. So this is pretty much the setup for each week. You'll have an overview of the work schedule, you'll have the week work, and then sometimes you'll have an Edpuzzle that is also connected. And then of course, you're gonna come to our Zoom meetings. Like I said, once a week, if you ever have any questions, it's on Thursday, so before things are due. Um, and you can always email me at rshort at guhsd.net if you have any additional questions. And if you need to set up time for a tutorial or something like that because you're struggling, then we can set that up through an email exchange. So please communicate with me and let me know if you have any questions. 
All right, I look forward to having you as a student. I will see you soon.